Katie Logan, Executive Champion of the Marcus Heart Valve Center in Atlanta with Piedmont Healthcare. And today we're here at the Napa Cardiology Conference with Dr. Julio Palmas, inventor of the first commercially available stent in the United States, talking about the future of medicine and the therapies and technologies that have evolved over time. What do you think's next? What's on the horizon? It's a great degree of uncertainty about what is next. Uh, we have a few options, um, mostly variations of what we already have, refinements on current technologies. Of course, there is a bioresorbable stent role that is still uncertain, and the big trials at the end of the year will tell us more about it. Uh, but by and large, I think we are, it's pretty much a rehash of what we had for the past 20 years. It's just that it's been a process of refinement. Um, improving on what we had uh, but not something we haven't seen still the revolutionary turn into high tech which is what I hoped to see you know looking from back from the 1980s I thought by now we would have been clearly into into nanotechnology mm -hmm. fabrications and you know really uh, you know high level technologies we are not there yet you mentioned nanotechnology. Tell me a little bit more about that. What does that mean? Well, it will be actually a radical departure of the way we make these devices today. For example, stents, coronary stents are made today the same way that they were made initially, um, you know, some uh, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, um, out of tubing using some cutting technique like lasers and and then you know polishings and and you know finishing techniques uh, what is called in manufacturing reductive techniques in other words you start with something big you end up with something small and finished mm -hmm. um, nanotechnology is the opposite essentially is building from the bottom up atom by atom is you is an additive technique and of course uh, sounds simple, but it, it involves a, a big step in technology, is a radical change in manufacturing methods, uh, and instead of having the hundreds of steps that we have today in all these finishing processes, it will be a highly automa automated method. P perhaps machines uh, will do most of the work and, uh, and essentially computers will be driving those machines. Uh, so I anticipate a vision of this that we won't have those rooms full of technicians that we have today with endless lines of operators doing sequential steps uh, but rather we would have essentially a full a room full of machines uh, under the com a computer command uh, doing steps that are highly automated. Uh, results would be that the devices will be highly refined um, and that the rejection rates will be very low and hopefully the costs will be driven down too. Interesting perspective. Thank you so much for your time. You bet.